This weekend at a concert hall near Moscow killed at least 137 people. Now, an offshoot of the Islamic State has taken credit. ISIS Kirsten is known to be active in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has pinned the attack on Ukraine, however, and is using Russian media to promote this view. On Sunday, hours after a district court arraigned four men suspected of carrying out the attack, Russia's main television channels, all controlled by the state, began laying the groundwork that Ukraine may have been ultimately responsible for what occurred. Putin's message is that Western nations, including the U.S., were placing the blame on ISIS to shift it from Ukraine. One anchor on a Russian state TV network said, quote, the United States and Europe understand that any connection between Ukraine and the attack against our city hall would be suicidal for Kyiv and the whole anti-Russian alliance. With us today to unpack all of this is former Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, a senior fellow and expert at Defense Priorities. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Uh, could you start by perhaps clarifying what Putin has and hasn't said uh, about the potential um, involvement of Ukraine? My understanding was that he hadn't blamed Ukraine specifically, uh, but that he had pointed out the uh, perpetrators were fleeing toward Ukraine, and the implication of that is clear. What what are the dynamics as we understand them? Yeah, uh, Putin's keeping his cards close to his vest. He's keeping his options open. That that's in fact accurate. Uh, what he said in the in his first public comments were that the, the uh, perpetrators were apprehended just about to enter Ukraine. They were headed in that direction uh, and that there was a window open for them on the other side, indicating that there was accomplices on the Ukrainian side of the border. Uh, then he went on to say that uh, they will completely obliterate anyone who had anything to do with it or supported it. So he's again laying the foundation work by pointing out that it, uh, you know, that there was uh, appeared to be some compl uh, complicity with Ukraine, but he stopped short of directly uh, blaming him. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev, on the other hand, uh, one of his uh, uh, senior foreign policy and, and military advisors, former president. Uh, was pretty explicit, said if there is a direct tie between Ukraine, there will be an overwhelming response by the Russian state, and they will meet, quote, death for death. So a lot of people besides just the media have definitely been pointing to Ukraine. Hmm. But how does that square with the fact that uh, U.S. intelligence did, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is did attempt to get a warning to the Russian government when it appeared on our radar that there was going to be some kind of extremist um, attack. Can you walk us through that aspect of this? Well, I, can, I can tell you one thing right off the bat that will preface my comments here is that for, for the people who are viewing this, if you already didn't like Russia, you're for sure that this was ISIS and it was had nothing to do with Ukraine. If you if you didn't like Ukraine before, i.e. in Russia, then you're going to believe definitely they had something to do with it. Here's the problem. There are a lot of inconsistencies in the in what's been uh, portrayed here in relation to ISIS. Some things just don't seem quite right. They're a little off. They could be ISIS. They could also be uh, an additional hand behind it. They could have been using ISIS. There's evidence actually for both. So all the Russians are absolutely convinced that it's Ukraine and all the Ukrainian and the Western are absolutely convinced this had nothing to do with Ukraine. So they're interpreting the same facts in very, very different ways. Uh, one of the key things here is that this mention you have here of March 7th and 8th where the U.S. gave this specific warning. The Russian side is saying that, yes, because apparently America got hold of this uh, plot and they, they were knew that it could go sideways really bad. And so actually tried to warn Russia to get rid of it so it wouldn't have happened. Now, interesting that that note said uh, within 48 hours of the 7th and 8th of March, that's when it was. Well, on that date, there was a huge uh, uh, tour group at that concert hall that was a big tie to the Russian president himself, Putin. The guy who was on stage there was a close ally of his. So there was a lot of concern that that's who the target was. And the Russian side is saying that because of that warning, they actually had security on there, which thwarted that attack. Once it didn't happen, then the security went back down to normal. And then apparently the attack was redone, according to their side. Now, according to the Ukraine side and according to the American side, no, we warned about ISIS all along and you didn't do anything to stop it. So you have these two different narratives on the same set of facts. 
Perhaps it would be useful to get into some of the details of what actually happened in the terror attack for those who aren't familiar with the events on the ground. Do we know more about how this managed to happen, uh, who the gunmen were specifically? And maybe you could also speak to reporting that the uh, footage that has been leaked of the um, the gunmen, it seems to indicate that they have been uh, abused, perhaps um you know, by, by uh, Russia oh, yeah. at some point between the time that they were captured and now. Oh, they, without question, they have been absolutely brutalized. And Russia has not been concerned about sharing that video. So they aren't worried about any negative ramifications. And those guys have just been absolutely uh, just brutalized from, from what happened. One of them, I, I don't want to be too graphic, but had something really bad done to him uh, and on videoed and then shared out by the Russian security forces. Uh, but the, the bottom line, though, is the reason why there are some inconsistencies. So, of course, uh, you probably know that the ISIS official website has published a lot of video. They had them in front of the ISIS flag. Um, and, you know, by all accounts, they were doing some of the things. They uh, defaced some of the, the bodies in, in the ways that ISIS does in this. Again, horrific. I don't even want to describe it in detail. Uh, but they did some of that. But the way that these guys were recruited, number one, they weren't diehard ISIS people like you've seen who were willing to die for the cause. These guys were recruited from within Russia uh, b by someone claiming to be an associate of the of the pastor, of the preacher, the, the ISIS preacher. So they didn't really know who they were talking to. Literally, it could have been anyone, uh, but they were given a large sum of money to, to take care of this operation. They were already in Russia, and then they were trying to escape uh, in the direction of Ukraine. So that's the, the part that we know. Uh, we know that they got money via uh, electronic means, uh, some of the stuff, and then they were provided with weapons from sources that not yet uh, has been identified how they actually got that part. But mm -hmm. uh, ordinarily, or very frequently anyway, ISIS, you know, has these ideological people who are willing to die for their cause. These guys were in it for money. It was done during Ramadan, which ordinarily, you know, ISIS being this uh, hyper uh, Islamic group wouldn't ordinarily do. But uh, it, it's also possible. And that's really why there's so much effort uh, room in here for multiple interpretations. And right now, we really don't know what happened. Hmm. What is likely to be the response within Russia? Is this is there going to be some kind of, you know, rally around Putin in the wake of, a, you know, what is like a, you know, their version of a of a of a 9-11 style tragedy, obviously with not nearly as many casualties. But will this, you know, increase Russian solidarity or support for what's going on in Ukraine? Or will it be a case where they say, you know, Putin failed to provide us security and there will be greater outcry about what's going on? What, what do you predict? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, it depends on where you sit, because in all of the Western media, everybody's jumping on that second version there that, oh, this shows that Putin's weak. He can't control his people. Uh, it's undercut. But that's not playing in Russia. I assure you right now, you absolutely have the 9-11 effect uh, that everybody is rallying around behind the president. Uh, there is overwhelming public support all across the nation. Huge crowds of people have joined, have come. The, they've almost turned the crocus hall into uh, a shrine. And look, thousands of people uh, lining up to come and see it and put down flowers and all kinds of other things. Other cities have been doing the same kinds of things. It's on all the televisions everywhere. Uh, I mean, there's a big issue there. And my concern is that this has a similar case as what happened after 9-11, where George Bush basically had a free hand to do anything he wanted because our people were so angry at what had happened. You saw Netanyahu. You're still seeing Netanyahu take advantage of what happened on the, the 10th of or 7th of October. Uh, and he has a free hand to do whatever he wants. And all kinds of excesses take place afterwards. I will be watching to see, does Putin do the same thing? Because he ha basically has a free hand to do nearly anything. And there are many ways he could escalate this war in Ukraine if he chooses to say that's who did it. Uh, as I understand it, the rationale for why um there is an argument, you're talking about these inconsistencies as to why it might be Ukraine is that the United States and the New York Times reported this out this morning, that the United States has discouraged Ukraine from doing any such attacks, that its aid and support is contingent on it aligning with the U.S.'s desires in this way, so that having an attack that is fronted by somebody else could be advantageous to the extent that they are trying to avoid pushback or any blowback from the United States, its ally in its war against, a uh, uh, defensive war against Russia. What is the rationale for why this ISIS-K group would want to attack Russia in the first place, motivated by something other than Ukraine? 
Brian, you know, then that's there, there has been a lot of that. Even before this terror attack happened, the, there was lots of reports that the U.S. was trying to tell the, the Ukraine side to, to back off these attacks into civilian cities of Belgorod, these attacks into the little villages that on the Russian side of the border, because they didn't have any military utility. It was just attacks into civilian areas, which kind of undercut our comment of trying to blame Russia for attacking civilian areas in Ukraine. So they asked them to knock that off, uh, at least according to some reports, before the terrorist attack happened, which would be in line with if they were planning a terrorist attack, we would not want that to happen because of the potential blowback and escalation. To the second part of your question there uh, about ISIS motivation, that's another part of the inconsistencies because there are a lot of other countries that should be higher on their ISIS hit list than Russia, who was way down the list of people that had done anything to ISIS. I, I think they hadn't had any direct ISIS contact since 2017, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, at least on anything meaningful. So they have been kind of off the radar here. So why would you have this extraordinary incendiary conflict uh, against Russia on a civilian target in the capital city. Uh, I mean, it, it's nothing but going to stir up lots of anger and hatred. And the question would be towards what end? What what message were they trying to send if it was, in fact, ISIS? And so far, it's not clear how they would benefit from it and why they would choose that target over anything else they could have done. But uh, again, sometimes terror doesn't have any rationale or logic. They just do things. So it's still possible. It could have been ISIS, just like it looks. And it's possible it could have been having somebody else's authorship. Right. I mean, you know, I, I, I never want I don't want to play into, you know, war on terror kind of tropes. And ISIS does seem to be a uniquely um, irresponsible, whatever you want to call it, actor on the world state, you know, feuding with, frankly, with other Islamic groups. They don't get along with Al Qaeda. They don't seem to get along with practically anyone. Could it be, you know, a response to Russian policy in Syria, which I believe, you know, is territory they purport belongs to them? Uh, you know, on some level it, it is, ISIS is a fanatical death cult of, of, of right. strange priorities that we've seen over and over again. It is, yeah, and and uh, you know the 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 issues is primarily that they are. I mean, they do seek uh, uh, you know a global caliphate, uh, but it's it's very small in territorial ambitions. You know, in Iraq and in Syria, where they had it and then lost it, um, and and it's just hard to see how attacking Russia plays into their plans for wanting to do something in the Middle East. So who knows? Hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us to work through some of that. We will, of course, continue covering this, and we'll have more rising in just a minute. Thank you.